Hey guys, Thingfishy here with part 5 of my in-depth parry tutorial series. The series that digs a little deeper into parrying notable enemies and bosses. For those of you for which the blanket advice of trying to parry the enemy's hand maybe isn't quite working yet. Today we are looking at the bell bearing hunter. Now I will be coming back to this enemy in a later episode as there is a boss version and some harder hitting versions to deal with. But today I'm going to break down this fight for anyone struggling with the Limgrave or Leonia versions of this enemy. So this is the first enemy in this series in which I could sum up the strategy in two words. Let me show you two clips to illustrate this. Here's what happens when you try and play passively and keep your distance from this guy. And here's what happens when you get right up in his face. So the two word strategy for this fight is stay close. If you back away from this guy even slightly, he throws his hard to dodge range attacks at you. If you stay close, he'll generally throw easily readable parryable attacks at you. So let's break it down. The first parryable attack is his standard horizontal swing. You want to parry just here, just before his hand reaches its highest point in the windup. Next we have his backhand swing, and much like the Crucible Knights, you want to parry here when the hilt of his sword passes his helmet. Now for the two handed overhead swing. For this one you want to parry when his hand reaches the highest point in the swing just before he does that final pullback and actually swings. Now for the unparryable attacks. Let's first look at the ones you're going to get if you are staying close. One of the most common and the most dangerous here is his grab attack. This does a whole load of damage, so you want to dodge here when you first see his hand start to move towards you. It's really easy to go too early here and get roll call, so don't panic. Next up we have his drill attack. Now while this looks really intimidating and does a bunch of damage, it's actually easily avoided by just strafing to the right of him. Always worth doing an extra roll just in case he turns on you, but if you've moved to the right enough, you'll be fine. Next we have his combo of three red flame attacks. This is probably the most dangerous attack up close as taking all three hits on this was enough to kill me and I was way over leveled for this Limgrave Hunter. Dodge the first attack as you see it move towards you. Dodge again as soon as your character is upright. Move towards him for the last one and dodge just as he reaches the top of his swing. Now for his shield bash. This is probably the most complex move you have to deal with at close range because it can have a couple of different follow ups. You want to dodge the initial bash as his shield passes his head, then move away for the follow up AOE. As soon as he's done the AOE, you want to move towards him again in anticipation of his next attack, which will usually be either the three hit combo or the drill attack. If you stay away for too long here, you will invite him to do the flying sword attack, which is the one you really don't want. And finally, for these flying sword attacks, now, unless you're really unlucky, getting any of these means you've failed to keep close enough to him. If he does start this, the safest strategy is to put yourself completely out of their range and get back up close when he's finished. If you have to dodge them, my advice would be to focus on his arms rather than the floating sword, as it's easier to read this way. And that's it, how to parry bell bearing hunters. Like I said at the start, I will return to this enemy in later videos, but the strategy here should work for all variants of this enemy in the game. Thanks for watching. See you soon.